What's going on guys? Dials46. Today we're going to take a look at the all new ISSC CQC friendly Mark 22 from Classic Army's new skirmish line. So the first thing I noticed about this gun, number one, is the awesome color on this. This is going to be Classic Army's Dark Earth option. Now this gun will also be available in black as well. The cool thing I like about it, before we get too far into it, is that as we're used to with most SCAR replicas, you have the two tones and then you even got into like D-Boy's uh, SCAR interpretation where it had like almost a yellow finish to the handle. The receiver was like a beige and then the top was like a bronze slash gold thing, which was kind of cool. I didn't mind the bronze up receiver type thing on some SCAR replicas, but it did get kind of annoying that it was just a mismatch of brown colors or earth type tone colors. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it's going to be from the pistol grip to the lower to the upper receiver to the stock. Classic Army's Dark Earth is Dark Earth. It is spot on. It's a beautiful shade of tan for sure. So before we get too far, I know a lot of you guys are like, what was all that stuff he was saying? What do you call that thing? Well, for all intents and purposes, it's going to be a SCAR. However, it is not going to be a VN licensed uh, replica. This is going to be licensed by ISSC on their version of the Mark 22. So as you can see on the side here, this is going to be a replica of a real still uh, 22 rifle. So the ejection port is going to be a lot smaller than what we're used to. Also, you'll notice that there are some different marks on the receivers. It's going to have some different lines and it's kind of like a reinforcing line here on the magazine well. It's lines that I don't really bind and I think it kind of adds to the character and sets us apart from other SCAR options out there. Those lines go into the stock as well. As you can see, there's some ridges here and it kind of gives us some texture as well. And again, I don't mind it whatsoever. Unlike some other SCARs out there, you're going to notice that it doesn't have the flip up front sight that you're used to. It's actually going to have some Troy style flip up front and rear sight with the uh, dual apertures on it. So you got your you know small hole, big hole for far off shots. Uh, and it's also going to be adjustable for windage as well. So that's really neat and I think that's added value to be quite honest if you're like me and you don't really enjoy that, that small peep sight that comes on some other scars. The other cool thing uh, that sets it aside from the scar, the difference is going to be that length of the side rails. It's going to travel the entirety of almost the whole foregrip portion of the Mark 22 when compared to a regular SCAR. Um, so that's kind of neat. It's going to give you some more rail estate. Huh? Uh, it's going to have a three position stock in there. Um, and I'm going to get into this and show you guys the battery. Now when you get to the battery compartment, it is going to be a collapsible stock. Uh, so you can fold it over and hinge it up. So if you need to get in those tight spaces or you're uh, you know, going in by truck into an AO for an op or something, this is going to be nice to be able to fold that in, keep it out of the way, keep it tucked away. Uh, it is going to have exposed silver high flow wirings, which isn't a bad thing. But again, those wires are going to be exposed. So you will want to take care of those. To access the battery, you're going to want to use the included Allen key to remove this screw here. It's going to uh, pull this part out here and I will show you right now. Now again, it comes with the included Allen key, which is very thoughtful and very nice. It's not going to be the regular, um, I know some of the scars, you can put the battery in the stock by removing the butt plate. However, on this one, it's just a void back there. But I took that upon myself to store my Allen key in the butt stock there. So I don't know. If you don't want to lose it, you don't want to keep it on your gear, you want to keep it with the gun, that's kind of a, might be something nice for you guys to do later on down the road so you don't lose your Allen key. Pop this open. You are going to put your Allen key right here in this hole and lefty loosey righty tidy okay now make sure you don't lose this screw so changing batteries in the field is something you're going to want to take yourself out of like a, out of a firefighter out of combat to do this isn't something you're going to want to do on the run um, you definitely don't want to lose this screw okay so take that out uh, and then you'll want to pop it back into the open position and this section right here is going to pull right out as you can see i have an 11.1 lipo stuffed in there right now keep watching because it's about to get good so you've got quite a bit of wiring in here uh when you do get an 11 once a little bit longer so it's going to be hard to stuff all that back in you might be um you might be forced to keep it on that um level one setting to keep that stock out a little bit just to give the battery and the wires enough space to breathe around in there classic army is including not only a small Tamiya plug, but they're also including the Dean's plug as well. So if you're wired to Dean's, you don't gotta worry about how to take time to solder on the new connectors to the Classic Army. They uh, took it one step further and they have gave you the Dean's um, to Tamiya plug, or you can just plug right into the Dean's. So that's really cool, that's added value for sure. And then the other added value is that it's gonna come with a pre-installed inline MOSFET. It's gonna have the active braking in there. You're gonna be uh, saving your trigger contacts, get better uh, voltage out of your battery. So that's awesome. And it's gonna be 
color-coded quick disconnect. So if you ever do got to break this thing down, that's really nice too. Make sure you're plugging the wires back to where they're supposed to go. Now, quick tip when you are uh, reinstalling your butt stock configuration after you get your battery plugged in there, uh, it will help to keep this kind of metal guide rod in the outmost position. So that's going to be like your your uh, third stock position. Uh, you want to keep that out as much as you can, and that's going to help you not pinch wires and uh, make sure that when you get the screw in, you're not you know. And it does take a little bit of getting used to, but after some refinement, after a few times of doing this, I'm sure it's something that's going to be kind of second nature. Um, there is a lot of wiring going on in there. And then back down. All right, so straight up, not going to be pulling any punches with you guys. The stock is kind of a pain in the butt. So again, going back to what I was saying, man, you definitely want to make sure you take yourself out of the field, out of the firefight, out of the game before you uh, start to change your batteries out. It can be kind of a pain in the keister for sure. Okay, I think I'm good there. You want to make sure you can line it up. You want to make sure that you can see the reciprocating uh, metal hole in that um, that adjustable stock bracket that's inside there. Take your included Allen key, screw it back down. Make sure you got a decent battery in there and change as little as possible. That being said, you are going to have your QD sling attachment points here on the stock, which is really nice. Again, you guys can kind of see that, that texturized stock. Really nice on there. You see... Um, you have your ISSC markings on it. It's a nice gun, man. Especially for, you know, what Classic Army is calling their skirmish line, which we all know is kind of what everyone else refers to as, uh, you know, the competition series, their sport line series, their budget-friendly, um, you know, what they recommend as an entry-level type AEG from their series. It's going to come with your inline MOSFET. The, uh, the gears inside Classic Army, not messing around. They're going to be wire-cut gears for extra precision. It's going to have that quick-change spring system in it, okay? So you get your budget-friendly AEG with a quick-change spring system in it. It's got that inline MOSFET already ready to rock with the Tamiya and Dean's connection on it. It's going to be a reinforced gearbox in this thing, so it's going to hold up for a while. You're not going to have to worry about your gearbox cracking or anything like that anytime soon. Um, and that's going to be a 9mm bushings gearbox. So the gearbox is not only reinforced, but it's got 9mm bushings on it. So that's pretty neat as well. Also going to come stock with a 6.03 tight bore barrel. So just to run that down, this is a budget friendly AEG. As you guys can see me here in the video, this thing is cranking. It is shooting lasers. I loved it. It performed great. It's going to have that adjustable three position stock on there which is really nice, really good. It's going to have that adjustable cheek rest, so if you're putting a uh, aftermarket uh, scope option on there, red dot, whatever, the body is going to be a high-density nylon fiber polymer. So it's not just plastic. This thing feels very robust. I don't have any wiggle in the mag well. I can't squeeze on it. It's not a thin, brittle-type plastic. It feels pretty beefy. It feels pretty heavy-duty. Um, now, again, you get the longer rails on the side when you compare this to an average SCAR replica or a SCAR. Uh, but the rail in the entirety of the top of the uh, upper receiver going all the way to the upper uh, foregrip there is going to be that same high density polymer that the rest of the body is made out of. This thing is consistently shooting between 325 and 330. As you can see in my chrono here, I was using 0.25s. If you do the math on it, usually at about 20 feet per second to 25 feet per second um, when you're dealing with the difference between a 2.0 and a 2.5 on a chrono. So it's going to be right up in that wheelhouse. So yeah, definitely consistent chrono readings. And this chrono is with a 2.5 that I'm showing you here in the video. So the gun's going to come with an 8.4 volt uh, battery along with a uh, probably a standard wall charger on it as well. Well, along with your high capacity 300 round magazine that's also going to be in that dark earth color very nice um, I was using a 7.4 lipo on this thing and I would not be afraid to run an 11.1 on this thing it was ripping it was keeping up and uh, it was shooting laser beams man so overall I really like this gun man I like the metal rail system on it the ambidextrous fire selector uh, I really enjoyed the change of pace uh, compared to other scars how it's gonna have the Troy flip up style sights on it I enjoyed the heck out of the positional uh, cheek rest and the three position stock on it the thing fed great it shot great and with all the added internals that they're going to be releasing this thing with it's going to be a steal at that 180 price point so thanks for watching guys uh, make sure you like share subscribe and uh, if you got any questions or comments make sure you leave them below and I will always get to them